Hi everybody, in this video I'll be showing you how to use the quadratic formula. Uh, the purpose of the quadratic formula is to calculate the location of x-intercepts of a parabola, if there are any. Now, there is never a guarantee that you will have uh, an x-intercept all the time. In fact, there are three specific cases uh, to look at where we can see how, how exactly how many x-intercepts you would get by using this formula. The formula itself is as follows. It's x equals negative b plus or minus radical b squared minus 4 times a and c, and it's all over 2a. Now, however you choose to memorize this, whether it's by song, story, or just by looking at the way it's set up mathematically, this is an important formula to remember. As I said earlier, there are three possible outcomes, and they are as follows. Now, using this formula, you will get either two solutions or two answers, which means that you would have two x-intercepts, one solution, which means that you would have only one x-intercept, or no solutions at all, meaning that you would not have any x-intercepts at all when graphing this problem. And there are three uh, examples that I have for each of these cases. So the, let's take a look at the first one. The first one uh, over here is, uh, the function is right here. So before I jump in to the formula, I need to first identify my a, which is 4, my b, which is negative 4, and my c, which is negative 3. My, my b is negative 4, so b equals negative 4. Now that I know what each of these variables represents, um, I can go ahead and substitute them directly into the formula itself, and that would give me the following. I would have x is equal to negative, negative 4, plus minus. This would be negative 4 squared minus 4 times my a times my c. And this is all over 2 multiplied by my c value, which is a 4. When you substitute the numbers in, the whole thing expands. It stretches out to make room for these numbers. But... It shrinks down just as quickly. In fact, in about two or three steps, usually this whole thing is done. So this now becomes a positive 4, plus or minus. This is 16. And if you multiply negative 4 with a 4, that would be negative 16. A negative 16 times a negative 3 would be a positive 48. And the denominator is just a regular 8. Continuing on, this would be 4 plus minus. Now this radical is simply the, the sum of 16 and 48. And that would be um, 64. Now 64 is a perfect square, which is always a good thing because I can go ahead and easily take that and make it into uh, an 8. Let me make some more space here. Oops, sorry about that. Let me do that one more time. Okay, better. So this is now um, a 4 plus minus an 8, all divided by an 8. Now, this plus and minus indicate the possibility of having two answers. To find out whether I have two answers or not, you look at your radical. If your radical is something bigger than a zero, you're going to have two answers, which means, in this case, that I need to split them from each other. Split from each other. One going up here, the positives would go there, the negatives would go in that direction over there. Okay? So this needs to be undone by writing 4 plus 8 over 8. Notice that the negative is not there anymore. And then 4 minus 8 over 8, notice that the plus is not there anymore. And then you simplify everything. This would be 12 over 8, which when reduced becomes uh, a 3 over 2, okay, which is like 1.5. And this over here, 4 minus 8 would be negative 4 over 8, which when it's reduced is negative 1 half or negative 0 0.5. So the location of the x-intercepts for this example would be as follows. It would be at 1.5, 0, 
and negative 0 0.5 comma 0. Okay? So as you can see, we have two answers here. So there are two solutions, two x-intercepts. In the next example, over here, again, I'm going to make some space. In the next example, we have to once again identify our a, b, and c. So a is 9, b is negative 6, c is a 1. And uh, you go ahead and jump right into the quadratic formula. So I would get the following. It would be x is equal to negative. This would be negative 6. That's my b number. Plus minus square root. Negative 6 squared minus 4 multiplied by my a, which is a 9, and my c, which is a 1, all over 2 times my a, which is a 9. And once again, this is just about breaking it down. So this negative negative 6 would become a positive 6. The opposite of a negative is a positive. Inside the radical, I would have 36 from negative 6 squared. And then I would have a minus 36 when I multiply a negative 4 with a 9 and then with a 1. And this is all over 18 from 2 times 9. Now, 36 take away 36 is 0. So this is 6 plus or minus radical 0. Now, normally I would not bother writing that, but the reason I, I took the time to do so is just so that you see what happens inside this radical sign. This becomes a 0, and the radical of a 0, the square root of a 0, is 0. So in other words, what I can do is simply I can disregard this. This is like non-existent anymore. As we know, 0 means not there. So this simply becomes a 6 over an 18. Okay, because there's nothing to add or subtract with that 6. So all I have to do is reduce this, and this would become 1 third, or 0 0.3. Okay, so that would be my, my single solution, my one solution. In other words, I have only one x-intercept, and it would be located at 0 0.3 and 0. That's my x-intercept. Ta-da. So that's example two. Example three, once again, my a, again, if you can't see the number, yet you can see a variable, your coefficient is a one. So a is one. My b is a negative one for the same reason, but there's a minus sign, so it's negative one. My c value is a three. And like I said twice already, you jump right in once you know your a, b, and c values. So this would be x is equal to negative, uh, that would be negative 1 plus minus square root. My b number goes in here again, square it, so b squared minus 4 times your a, which is 1, multiplied by your 3, which is your c value, all over 2a, which is 2 times 1. So this double negative, once again, the opposite of a negative 1 is 1 plus minus. This is negative 1 squared becomes a 1. And if you multiply negative 4 with 1 and then with a 3, you get minus 12. So it's 1 minus 12 all over a 2. So continuing on, I get 1 plus minus radical. Now 1 minus 12 is negative 11. And here I need to slow down and really think carefully about this. The square root of 11 is not possible. If you plug this into a calculator, it will say error. It can't do that. And when you get to higher math, there is a way around this. It's called imaginary numbers, but we're not going to look at that uh, scenario when we talk about this particular case. When you're doing quadratic formulas and you encounter a negative inside a radical, or any time you do a negative inside a radical and you're not at a level to handle that, you have to understand that this is not possible. And the reason it's not possible is because if you consider the meaning of a radical, the meaning of a radical, like for example, radical 9, means 
The answer is 3. And the reason is because 3 squared makes a 9. Okay, so 3 squared makes a 9. The same thing is true for 100, right? 10 squared makes 100, and so on and so on. So in other words, the answer to a radical should be a number that you can multiply against itself to produce the number under the radical. Well, when you look at a negative 11 inside a radical, there is no number that you can multiply against itself that will ever produce a negative value. There's no number. So you can never take the, value, the square root of a negative number. And if this is not possible to do, then the rest of it is not possible to simplify either. And you just hit a roadblock. So at this point, because we're trying to solve this equation and find out the location of the x-intercepts, because I cannot do this, I'm stuck, I cannot continue solving it. And if I cannot continue solving it, then there's only one way to write the answer, and that is that there is no answer or no solution. And when you write that there's no solution for a quadratic formula, what you're also saying is that there is no x-intercept. Okay, there are none. So we saw three cases where... Uh, where we have results, the first one being two x-intercepts or two solutions, the second one where we have only one solution or one x-intercept, and the third case where we have absolutely no solution or no x-intercepts. And again, the reason is because of this. This can't be done. Okay, so it stops everything. Now, I want to show you what these things actually look like when, when graphed. So this is Desmos.com. It's a great free website. I recommend it to everybody to check it out if you're not already aware of it. Desmos.com, free online graphing calculator. It's amazing. Um, the first function that we looked at was this one. And you can see, and I'm going to go ahead and make this a little more visible. You can see that we have two, we have two intercepts, one right here. Right, there's one, your 1.5 and one right here, your 0 0.5, negative 0 0.5, and that was our, those were our two solutions. The second one looks like this, and you can see right there is a vertex, and this is 0 0.3, and that was our x-intercept for the second example, 0 0.3. The third example was this one. Now here's a vertex that is the lowest point on this parabola, and Although, there, although there's a vertex, this vertex will never touch down upon the x-axis. Never. So there is no x-intercept for this function, and that was exactly what we determined by using the quadratic formula. No solution means no x-intercept. So all of these have a, a purpose, a meaning, when graphing them. And I think it's important for, uh, for all of us to understand the translation from the formulas to the graphs themselves because there is a direct relationship and the purpose of using this formula is to get the location of these intercepts if they do exist at all. So I hope this video helped you out. As always, please stop by and leave a comment and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.